Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural, It's Time for a Wedding. Now, admittedly, uh, it's a little different because I've actually moved the desk. Instead of being 100% flush with that wall, now I'm adjacent to it. Still changing the office around. It's why this review is coming out so late. To be honest, it's not that bad. Yes, the concept and technically speaking what Becky does to Sam, being that she roofies him, is not good. It has not aged well on that fact. Oh, ha 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 ha. That is taken. And considering if you try to switch the roles around, the gender is around, wooey, that would not go well. It's a standard kind of affair. It's a very basic episode. Is there a little bit of some witticisms in it? Sure. There's a nice little appearance from Crowley. Garth really gets introduced into this episode and he's a funny little character. There's not much to this episode aside from the fact that the obviousness is so well displayed on the wall when Sam goes off apparently camping for four days and he comes back married or marrying Becky and the fact that there's this really awkward scene at the very beginning of the episode with Dean talking to someone at Hooters about his problems and he's trying to do that really old antiquated thing of like oh it's my friend my friend his brother my friend I kind of feel that instead of this stupid conversation you could have opened up with Dean just being like hey yeah he went off and I can't find him I don't know where he is like he could actually be searching for his brother and then he thinks he's found him and he's like oh oh it's a wedding what where have you been I felt that that was a little bit mishandled. I did find the loophole that the demon is doing too is you would have thought that every demon would have thought of this by now. And the fact that Crowley's like, that was just bad for business. You imagine. But again, this is supernatural. They're just trying to take a little bit of what's established and kind of tweaking it. We're not full-blown retconning anything. They literally point out that this is him taking advantage of the system through a very, very, very weak loophole. But otherwise, I, the humor is kind of funny. There is a quite a obvious uh, resemblance to misery in all but, you know, the insanity and the uh, hitting the ankles. Having Sam tied to the bed and Becky standing over him, very much akin to misery. And it's good to see that Becky would eventually grow up, like they would bring her back in season 15 and she would have aged a lot like she would have grown up in character. Otherwise, I, I don't know, I don't find it that bad. Probably the part that I was most interested in was the restaurant <laughs> where Dean meets Garth. That is a, oh, pa Panakook? 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 It's a Dutch breakfast place where they make these really big little flat uh, pancakes and they're delicious. The Dutch is probably the modern day uh, equivalent of you know, franchise version you would know of it, but this is one, if it's the place that I'm thinking of, those barriers made me think that was what it was. It's one of the first ones to ever happen in Vancouver, and it's super successful, and it's really delicious to eat at if you've ever been there. You should definitely go there, it's delicious. But in the end, what is my rating for It's Time for a Wedding? Uh, you know what, to be honest guys, it's not. I was expecting something on the kin to that of like, from season six, there was that episode with the girl with the you know, who died, who had the ghost kidney, and then the glass went and hit it. That was an episode that I basically gave a zero to. This is not the worst. It's not the worst episode of the show. Sure, the idea of it is quite uh, but in terms of how the episode is structured, everything kind of flows pretty slow, and even though some of the humor is a bit, like, obviously a bit dated and a bit uh, it still works for the most part. So in the end, I'm gonna give it, it's time for a wedding. Oh god, I'm, I'm gonna give it a three out of seven. It's not bad. But a lot of the episodes in this season, we're, we're what, what, we're fucking eight episodes in now and I still have yet to be more on the positive end. I think I've only given a positive rating to a couple of episodes here and there, so woof. Anyways, let's see what you guys have to say about this episode. I don't get all the hate for this episode. For me, it's a guilty pleasure episode. It has the introduction of one of the better characters until the latter seasons completely ruined him, Garth. I love it when Dean was looking for a big burly hunter type fella and he gets shocked by this Bean bowl of a man who's drinking a milkshake and reading Marmaduke. <laughs> this is a pretty funny intro. I enjoyed seeing Becky again, even though I may be one of her only fans, but I do like that she is pretty much representation of the fandom. I see it's fun seeing Crowley again, and it was fun seeing Sam drugged. I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Actually, that's something that I didn't mention really in the review, but yeah, Becky was essentially this their representation of the insanity of the fandom. And she evolved kind of like the fandom did a little bit, but no, she was peak fandom and that fandom did exist right up until the end of the show. Like some of those were, some of those people were coming out of the woodwork when the show ended. 
Can't wait for the review. Rant of time of a wedding. It's going to be legendary. I apologize if I let you down because it wasn't really a rant. If it was, it was just a standard review. This episode is not bad. Not only bad in concept, but also in execution. Now, before I get to the obvious downside of the episode, let's start with some upsides. Starting with Garth's introduction. I love his character in this episode. I thought he and Dean made a pretty good duo. I also love the interesting twist where we discover the purple shirt demon hired another demon to organize the accident so he can collect souls early. Later, finding that out, we get a return of Crowley, and although he only made a brief appearance this episode, I think he nailed his one and only scene in the episode. Yep, definitely did. Now let's move on to the negative uh, I have, which is Superfan99, also known as Yeki Becky. Well, I couldn't believe that they went in that direction with the character. First she drugs Sam, then she's tied him to a bed, and then she, or then her and Sam have this bizarre dialogue where she goes on about wanting someone to love her for her, then Sam suggests that perhaps she shouldn't drug them, but she's like, I want you. That, that right there is the sound of a person who has lost touch with reality. Hey, three out of seven. Hey, you had it on. But yes, no, definitely lost touch with reality. I've seen this episode being placed in a lot of people's worst lists. And however, it's not even in my top 10 list. In fact, it's not the worst episode of the season. That honor goes to episode 13. Ooh, I have something to look forward to. What I consider bad writing is what that comprises the character and the story. That's why Time for a Wedding is just a run-of-the-mill bad for me. Yes, it's cringy and Becky is annoying, but it was something that I expected from the CW stereotype cheesy Valentine's episode. Yeah, I'm not that mad. After watching the last four seasons, the only two things I really hate about season 7 are the Leviathans and episode 13. Wow, episode 13 has a bad rap. I'm interested to see what happens when we get to that one. Time for a Wedding, even though this episode is bad, it's not as horrible as other episodes from the Dab Era. This episode has two great things the introduction of garth i love dj qualls and the role i uh, loved him in films the new guy and road trip oh, i haven't talked or thought about road trip in ages i just think about the freaking uh, the breakfast scene <laughs> great thing uh, another great thing was crowley loving watching his conversation with dean and sam time for a wedding is a guilty pleasure though not that bad and not that good but pleasant to watch Give it a 6 out of 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello, new subscriber. I watched a couple of reviews, and I'm intrigued by the thoughts and analysis of them. One question, and I've seen the segments with the comments. What's that about? Is Yeah, it's just something that I started when I started re-reviewing episode uh, season 1. I did a little bit of it for season 15, but really from 1 all the way up until current, I have been doing this, and I'm going to keep doing it up until the end of this rewatch, which will be the last episode of season 10. I'm going to say that it's definitely one of the worst episodes of all time. However, compared to the others, it's definitely the best of the worst episodes of all time for me. Second, the humor is a cringe except for Garth's lines. He always makes me laugh. I love Crowley's mention to Becky about her character in the series. It's on point for him. Yes, he does give her a pretty brutal but very honest description of her. I absolutely hate how the show always finds a way to make take Sam's humanity, human anatomy. This is the worst I've ever seen it than what Zazel did to Sam as a baby which ultimately led to Sam losing his anatomy to Lucifer autonomy autonomy sorry when he professes Sam uh, possesses Sam and again later in season 9 when Dean does to Sam by tricking him into allowing that angel to possess him which le later leads to Kevin's death sorry for the spoils yeah no I, I never liked the whole angel possessing him thing I thought that was a bit of a weak element by my my point being is that Sam had never had a choice in those events of, of, of his autonomy and to think that Dean is a deuce in Season 7, just wait until Season 8 and 9. Wirely. Oh god, he's gonna get worse? Oh, Becky, you're not a loser, you're a criminal that deserves 5 to 10. What a strange episode. Why she gets off is so yeah, so easy is beyond me. It's funny how Becky becomes a better character in the final season, then gets killed. Well, her demon friend was cool, I hope he returns, but I doubt it. I don't think his that yeah. But yeah, that is kind of... I honestly thought that line was in this episode, that five to ten years thing. I thought that was in it. <laughs> Time for a Wedding, unsurprisingly, is one of my top ten worst episodes of the entire show. But to me, it's not the worst of all time. However, given the fangirl fanboy obsession then and currently, there are two. There are many who envy Becky, who represents the obsessed fans, who would do the same thing to Jared, Jensen, and Misha. I don't condone it, but somebody needed to say it. Pretty sure Sam being tied to a bed by Becky is a callback to Stephen King's Misery. The rest of the episode I actually enjoy. I think it's an interesting take on a crosswoods demon creating loopholes in the contract to sell your soul to. This is the first physical appearance of Garth, which he was previously talked uh, he talked to Bobby at the weekend in Bobby's. 
It's also refreshing to see Dean try to grow up ever so slightly when he expresses his understanding that Sam doesn't need, always need him around in his life. It's hard for Dean to accept this because who, when fans ask who is the better parent, John or Mary, the answer is always Dean. Very, very good point at the very end, Joe. That's a good one to end on. Anyways, guys, thank you for your comments. All right, next episode is in episode number nine, How to Win Friends and Influence Your Enemies. I think that's what it is. Anyways, give you guys his comments about that episode, and I'll uh, read those off in the next review. Until then, I hope you guys like the new setup. I hope you guys liked uh, this review. And if you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.